topic, please feel free to drop uh, your queries in the chat box. We will answer and take all of them towards the end of the session. This is to make sure that we don't have any interruptions going on. Okay, so before we start, I just wanted to make sure that we set few guidelines, a little bit of working alliance. Make sure that you have your um, headphones plugged in. This is to make sure the confidentiality of every single individual present here, especially if there is some kind of sharing happening. Um, and also to make sure that you can hear me well. You can sip on water, sip on your tea, coffee, anything that you have with you right now. Feel free to journal, feel free to write if something's coming up for you. Also make sure that there's enough space around you in case we would like to move. Another point I would really, really like to emphasize on is at any point of time, if any of you are having some kind of sharing, whether through chat or whether through your audio, Let's make sure that we respect the individual who is sharing in this space to acknowledge and make sure they feel valid. Okay, I'm going to uh, have a small check-in to see how are we doing today. So for those of you who are on um, your uh, audios or videos, uh, you can use your, the reactions that we can use on Zoom, uh, on Zoom to show me how you're feeling right now. Or you can feel free to use the chat box to let me know in one word, how are you really doing today? Or how are you feeling to be a part of this webinar? Are you happy? Are you not interested? Are you okay? Meh. What? I really want to know how are we feeling today? Okay, Chandrasekhar says he feels good. Anyone else? Okay, let's take another minute to see if you want to tell me. Is it, there's no right or wrong um, answer to this. It's okay. Any emotion, however you're feeling, it's fine. Okay, thank you, Shailesh. There's not going to be any kind of bias or judgment in this space today. So feel free. Sharanya. Okay. Chill. Hmm. Looks like we all need some ice breaking activity to come back to the here and now. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pooja. Okay. All right. We'll move ahead. So like I said, it's important to come to the here and now. I see that a lot of us are having, taking some time off to settle in. And I see Anuja's message as well. Thank you for sharing all of you. So I invite each one of you to take a deep breath and to remember that every time you're inhaling, inhale through your nose. And every time you're exhaling, you can exhale through your mouth. Okay, inhale and exhale it's okay if there's a sound coming out when you're exhaling inhale and exhale one last time let's take a deep breath and exhale okay Shit. So now let's talk about why we're really here today and what is this nature? Why are we talking about nature so much? You know, when we talk about well-being, when we talk about wellness, I personally believe that there cannot be any kind of well-being or wellness if you do not consider nature as a well-being for your own self. So a lot of times when we would refer to nature, we look at it as something that is here to threaten us or something that we have to control or something that we have to use. Recently, I've come across this term called uh, nature connectedness, such a beautiful word. And what nature connectedness really emphasizes is about understanding and responding to what the nature is giving us. 
this in fact will help you regulate your own feelings and make sure that you are healthy overall and when we talk about health we are not really talking about only the physical side of it or only the mental side of it when you talk about health it's a combination and the intervening of both your physical and mental health which is what primarily we as psychologists and therapists are focusing on right now with our clients as well throughout this webinar you'll also see me talking a lot about the mind and body connection because of uh, my own nature of work so in case during the process if you feel like i'm going a little too fast or if you want me to go slow feel free to use the chat box um, to let me know about it so coming back to nature connectedness well we have this meaningful relationship with the rest of nature it is important to see nature as a part of us rather than seeing it as something else something different i'll i will be talking about it um, through the webinar but when we talk about nature we see as something that is distant from us something that is not close to us but in reality it is important to see that nature is within us when you look at elements when you look at the elements that the nature withholds it withholds elements of both our own body our emotions as well so to make sure that i help you understand what i really mean let's look at emotions and the connectedness with nature you know when you look at a lot of um, people who write songs or um, who write a lot of plays or dramas within their words or when they articulate feelings they use nature as a metaphor to help us understand what is the emotion of that particular character what is the feeling of that particular um, character things like storm wind hailstorms rain tsunami all of these are beautiful metaphors that people use they use nature to help you understand what the character is feeling now if you consider the elements of nature as our own body i found some beautiful pictures online that i wanted to show you guys um so i invite you all to just look at your feet or your hand whichever is comfortable for you and whichever you're okay to touch and to just gently see and observe the texture of your own hand or your feet and observe the nerves the color of the nerves just observe don't try to attach any meaning to it just look at it and see how it feels see how it looks see how it looks at a distance see how it looks when it's closer to you you know we as therapists why we are doing a lot of grounding based activities both with our uh, individual clients or when we are working with groups groups i usually start the grounding from the head and i go and transition towards the feet because when you look at the feet when you look at your nerves and when you look at the picture that i have here of the tree the roots that it has can you see the similarity that it withholds okay can you see the similarity you know a lot of times when uh, the reason why we say that the, your foot your feet can be the greatest sense of grounding that it can give you is because that's the part of your body that is touching the ground the major amount of time throughout your life or throughout your day per se that is why we use a lot of feet based work touch based work towards the ground to give our clients the sense of grounding to help them come to the here and now that is why when i said it's important to see that nature is within us rather than looking at nature as something that is different something that is not accessible something that is far away nature is something that's already within you and around you so it's important to not have that distinction not have that distance so there was this beautiful um tech talk um TED talk that I watched of uh, Caroline Arnold. Anuja, I see that you have um, raised your hand. Is it okay if you could drop your um, query on the chat? Okay. Um, make sure that you drop it on the chat. I will come back to it as soon as I'm done. Um, with the interaction okay 
So I recently watched this um, tech talk by Caroline Arnold, uh, where she was beautifully talking about how uh, when you talk about the concept of nature, people have this weariedness with it. People have this distance with it. You know, because because of the individuals that we are right now and the society we are living in right now, we are constantly shifting from multiple hats. The hat of a professional, the hat of an employee, the hat of a mother, the hat of a father, son, daughter, uncle, aunt, homemaker, caregiver, multiple hats. And we are constantly shifting, constantly um, navigating our way through it because of this very on nature of our um, live lifestyle these days. We are naturally prone to pressure. We are naturally prone to stress. And we have this world that we have built around the man-made world or in other words, the electronic world that is around us has made our life even more tougher, which is naturally, you know, like I said, flowing towards stress, flowing towards pressure, flowing towards depression, not having time for our own self, multiple, it's like a vicious cycle. So there is this recent study that has been conducted in India in the year 2019, way before COVID happened, um, they have seen that one out of four individuals seem to have some kind of mental health concern. I'm really mindful of using the word disorder, uh, especially with corporate employees, because the understanding when I say stress and anxiety, there is that stigma that automatically comes that, oh, I don't have anything. But stress and anxiety are the most common things that each one of us face on an everyday basis and we are hustling around. So almost one in four individuals way back before COVID have experienced stress or anxiety in their life. And even in the World Health Organization, um, sorry, in 2016, if I'm not wrong, have released an official statement stating that, you know, uh, by the time of 2020, depression is going to be the second largest health issue that the world is going to face. And trust me, this was way before they knew that COVID is what's going to happen. And when I say that in being a professional who works in the mental health field, I have seen a lot of cases, especially coming up from corporate employees who have this disconnection with what's happening around them, especially in the world around them or with the nature around them. And we are, so within, within this world, within the ecology that we are, we are having almost 8.7 different varieties of species that are living along with us and we are only one among them. And I'm so sorry to say that we are that species, that only species who are disconnected to their truest world, their truest world being their truest nature. When you look at generations or our ancestors, the hundreds of generations that lived way before us, they were so connected with the nature. They lived in the nature. They didn't have this man-made uh, robotic uh, things that were happening around them. They were always within that uh, nature. And that's why when you see, you know, you might probably hear your own grandmother or your elders come and say that in our time, we didn't have any of these health issues. We are eating the same food that they eat. We are doing the same thing. So what has changed? The lifestyle, the way we are living, we're just functioning. We are not living. So this I believe that personally, this loss of connection, this disconnect that we are having with the world, with the nature around us, seems to be the primitive problem or the primitive concern. Definitely there has been a drift. Definitely there has been a shift in the way people are seeing right now, seeing life right now. And I'll tell you what, as a therapist, I've seen that there are a lot of tools we prescribe to our clients or we help our clients work through or navigate through life. And I've observed that a lot of tools are really expensive. Even therapy sometimes can be really expensive to a lot of people. It may not be affordable. So what is your best source? What is your best tool? Nature. Nature is that tool that is free, that accepts you without any bias, that is already within you and around you. It's not a choice. It is a mandate. You have to take it. You have to be with it. You have to live with it. 
So considering this around the timings of 2016, 2017 and 18, two countries, New Zealand and USA, and even later United Kingdom, Britain has joined. But they started giving something called as green prescription to their um, patients or people who came to visit the doctors. And you know what really these uh, green prescriptions are? Green prescriptions are where they give their clients, um, asking them to go for a walk, change your lifestyle, um, uh, engage with nature and things like that. So what they're really doing is they're not prescribing for the illness of the client. They are prescribing for the wellness of the client. So like I said, it's not a choice. It is a mandate. So there is this beautiful study that Japan has been doing from quite some time now. And it's a beautiful country which has huge, humongous spaces of um, open spaces that they have in their country. I think about 60 to 70 percent of their space is mostly forest land and an open area. So when they have observed that individuals and employees in their own country have been facing a lot of illness and that there is a lot of disconnect happening within themselves and within their organizations, they, they try to use the already present material and resource that they have, which are their forests and open spaces to provide for their um, citizens. So what they did was they introduced something called as forest bathing or bathing. Um, and uh, in, in, within that, when I say forest bathing, I know the term is really interesting, sounds a little too uh, gimmicky as to what is this. Um, and they also have something called as forest therapy, which we don't have to talk about for today's webinar. But in forest bathing, what really happens is they're really talking about you immersing yourself within the nature. You know, when a lot of doctors and mental health professionals are telling you that it's important you go for a walk or um, sit in an open space, sit, go to a park and things like that, they're just not asking you to go sit or walk your dog. They're asking you to go sit there, involve, immerse into that process and really disconnect from what's really happening around your world and be in the here and now with the nature. Involve with your five senses. So what these people in Japan have done that is that they have done a scientific study so that they provide that evidence and they provide that evidence to all the countries around them to have the same uh, framework within their, uh, within their own countries, with their own citizens. So they have realized that, and trust me when I say that they have used scientific evidence, I'm not referring to only psychometric tests. It was more on the physiological point of view as to how are the neurons responding, what's happening within their body, how is their lifestyle changing, how is their mind processing things, how effective are they able to perform in their workspace, in their personal life, how much are they able to show up both for themselves and for others. So they have been able to uh, gain a lot of information about that. And they've seen that because of all the forest bathing and the engagement with the nature, and it's a beautiful art, of course, has helped a lot of people help with their immune system, increase the immunity rates, help with people who have experienced stress, who experience anxiety on an everyday basis. So when I say nature is not a choice and that it is a starting point, what I'm really referring to is that, like I said, our ancestors and early human beings have started from way before, hundreds of years ago. And that was their starting point. And that should be our starting point. I'm not saying that we have to go live like our early human beings and dress that way and eat that way. I'm just saying that it's important to engage with the nature because it truly has those benefits. And you don't always need these different kind of approaches and things that are going on Instagram right now. Just a five minute of disconnect because it provides you the sense of being. Who are you? It's important to reconnect with who were you? Who are you right now? What were you doing and what are you doing right now? It has the greatest therapeutic value especially for free, trust me. I'm constantly stressing on that because I understand the importance of um, 
economic issues that come around things that um, or um, resources that provide that wellness to us. And nature is that best cure, it's that best medicine, it's the best healer you can ever find because it holds you. It holds you like it's baby. It doesn't judge you. There's no bias. It welcomes you with an open heart. And we all need that. We really do need that. This is very so, interesting, actually. And it's, it's been so... Yeah, am I audible? Yes, Rishika, yes. Uh, I would like to say this has been so enlightening so far, especially when you made us touch our veins and realize that, you know, in so many different ways, we are so connected and we're so rooted to our nature. As quirky as the name suggests, Green Prescription, you know, when you first said the name, it really intrigued me. I'm like, what is this Green Prescription? Until only to find out that, you know, you don't always need medicines, like you said, you don't always need social media or you don't always need to have someone to talk to instead when you can just speak to mother nature, when you can just spend some time in the nature, go for a small walk, maybe sit in the park, feel the breeze. This is so therapeutic. I so strongly agree with this. Yeah, it's so true. And it's, it's wonderful how you say that because a lot of times when we go to doctors, we are expecting them to give us medication. We are expecting uh, them to give us that immediate cure. Because we are used to that fast fashion world. And again, it shows that disconnect that we have uh, with the reality of the world. And the, you will come back to that reality only when you start connecting to what's happening around you, connecting with the nature. Because the nature is going to be here. It's not going to go anywhere unlike the Instagram reels that keep on, you know, you have to swipe up and down. <laughs> the nature is going to be here. <laughs> so okay. it's important. Thank you for bringing that up. It's been great. Yeah. Okay. So just to make sure that all of you are still here with me before I go forward, I know we have done a lot of talking. We'll be doing a lot of movement as well as you move forward. So um, please use the chat box to send me um, the initial of your name as in the first letter of your name. For example, my name is Srini. So I will send an S in the chat just so I know that you all are here with me. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow, that, that's an active audience. Amazing. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. So before we go ahead, I invite all of you to give a good stretch. Stretch your arms, stretch your back. Stretch your shoulders, your feet. Just wiggle, 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 wiggle and come back here. Are we here? <laughs> okay. Okay. I probably might have already covered the benefits that, but there are a few more benefits that I would like to really highlight today. And as I already said, Grounding and coming to the here and now is really important for us, especially because we are working in this fast world, corporate world. And when I say coming in the here and now, I'm not really referring to, you know, shutting down or closing everything that's happening in the life and coming, you know, or really dissociating with what's happening in the life. Grounding is really about having that awareness that, okay, this is happening. This is what is um, you know, causing this or X, Y, Z for me. But for now, I'm going to choose to be present in this moment, to be here, to be in the now. And nature could be that great tool because nature is always in the here and now. It's not in the past. It's not in the future. It is here at this moment, this point of time. And another beautiful concept that comes around nature for me, and a lot of people don't tend to talk about it, is spatial awareness. And you will understand why I brought this up when I talk about the action plan that I'm going to really address here today is really being aware about your surroundings. Now let's do a simple activity to understand spatial awareness because I'm not sure how many of you here really understand that term. So rather than putting it through words, let's put it through an experience. So I invite you all to look around the space that you are in, wherever you are, you're in a room, you're in um, any transport or wherever you are, just 
look around the space that you're in, notice the objects that are placed, the temperature of the room, the colors in your space, any sounds you can hear, my voice, the fan, the traffic, or kids playing in the background, whatever it is. Just pay attention to all of these things that are happening around you. This very nature is nothing but spatial awareness. You are aware of the space around you. And for now, obviously, the quadrilateral that is uh, that we are in right now. But really being aware of also of the screen that we are in right now. All of this is nothing but spatial awareness. And like I mentioned about shifting the hats, shifting our roles from one role to other, it's really stressful. It's like you're going from one character to the other, to the other, sometimes playing multiple characters at once, multiple roles at once. It is important to sometimes put all that away and be your truest version, truest self with the nature. And that holding is what the nature would really give you. And, you know, a lot of times I hear from especially mothers who are working that I don't have time for myself. I have to work, I have to take care of the kid. And I've also heard this from fathers uh, that I have to do this, I have to do that. There's so much going on. I don't have time for myself. I can't relax. So what can you do really? How do we relax? And do you, so yeah, I understand that, especially when we are in this world, it's, it's quite um, difficult to navigate through it, but I really request you to take that time off at least for three minutes in your life and then slowly progress to three minutes a day, five minutes a day, because it's important to have that time for yourself. It's important to come back to your body, your role, what you have to do in your life, what you want for yourself. These things to think about or to really just sit with outside in your balcony or your terrace or whatever is really accessible to you is really really important and it's primary to emphasize on that and would it really have an impact okay so when i'm talking about impact i'm not really talking only about the pros i'm not really referring to only that aspect now we all know that it does have pros Pros. But what am I really referring to is if you see a lot of people, especially even psychologists and therapists now, are using nature as a primitive or as an important tool to help our clients soothe, to calm down, or to um, be able to be in the here and now, or to restore all the things that they have been so disconnected to, or to provide that safe space for them. And nature by all itself as well is providing that safe space to us. It, and we are only um, seeing as something that is just present. Sometimes we don't even acknowledge um, the nature that is around us. It helps you understand what are your own personal boundaries? What are your professional boundaries? Trust me, when you get that time off, be with yourself and be with the nature, you are able to establish that space for yourself. You are able to understand these boundaries for yourself and then replicate this in, in the life that you are leading right now. And like I said, nature accepts you as a whole. It's not going to see you for the mistakes that you have done, for the good that you, want, uh, you have done. You are one. There's no bifurcation based on your um, culture, religion, caste, sexuality, or all of that. You are a whole. And you are that for it. There's no um, differentiations or branches that it sees in you. Uh, Shimi, so, I would like to add a point. Yes, Rishita. I'm sorry, your voice is lagging. Is my voice clear? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Am I audible to you now? Awesome. So uh, just going back to the last point you were mentioning, how we have different hats and, you know, we play different roles the entire day. This really took me back to a memory that a brief conversation I had with my mother one day. Uh, the whole day went by and then uh, I just came back from work. She got done with her work. We sat for a cup of tea. And at the end of the day, I was like, how was your day, mom? Uh, how are you feeling? What are you feeling like? And she went all blank. And that is when I realized that, you know, uh, we humans do so much the whole day. Uh, we are running around, we are doing different tasks that we sometimes forget to take a moment to hit pause and rewind and relax. 
to understand who we are, what we are doing, where we are doing it, why we are doing it. We just keep moving past in, and that's it. That's the end of the day. And then same cycle starts again. But now mentioning, you know, how we can just sit in our balcony for even three minutes a day and then gradually proceeding to five and 10 and 15. This is just really nice. Yeah, and that is what I'm going to cover in the action plan right now as well. So when I say action plan, I'm really giving a green prescription to them right now. <laughs> and the green prescription they are going to see. And trust me, if I'm allowed to do so, and if words are not enough, I'm really going to make a type, uh, you know, like a physical copy of a prescription and send it to each one of you. Because I do know the importance that it varies. So I'm going to come um, through the action plan based on evidence based on my own personal um, experience and my own experience while working with my own clients who are corporates and who are working individuals right now. So like I said, there is that disconnection happening. We all know it, it's happening. And um, it's either happening in the mind, it's mostly happening in the mind. We don't know what's happening in the body because like I said, the disconnection is not just externally happening, it's also happening internally, which was the main reason why I brought in the element of our own body to observe how it is very similar to nature. So how can we really form this connection? How can I really connect to the nature? How do I just be? Just being is also a huge problem these days. We don't know how to just be. So like I invite you to today after the webinar, go out, go to the balcony or stand in, uh, in, um, on your terrace or whatever is really accessible to you or you just have a window, that is also totally okay. Look at it. Look at what's happening. Don't detach a meaning to what's happening. Turn this off. And if it helps really do this movement of turning this off, just look and observe what's happening around you. If you see a tree or if you see an animal, let's go with the tree, for example. You might be seeing a leaf falling or the slight breeze. Just observe it. Just observe what's happening. Or if you see maybe a bird walking um, on, the, on the ground or something like that, just see how its legs are moving. How is it holding the leaves or the fruit? What is it eating? What is it doing? Be curious about it and just observe it. There's no need to attach a meaning. Usually when you walk around this space, or I invite you to go to a park if that's accessible to you, see what's catching your attention. There will definitely be something, maybe another person walking around, maybe a leaf falling, a branch, a broken branch or something like that. Just observe what's happening. And pay your attention there. There will be thoughts that will come up. Because that's a general human tendency. I'm not telling you that it will stop as soon as you tell it to stop. It's, it's not in our control sometimes because we are humans, shelter, it's fine. Let it happen. But try this activity. Go on a walk or sit outside. Observe what's happening. That's it. That's the best thing that I can give you to come back to the here and now, to come back, to be grounded. And like I said, we all know this. We all know this um, that this works and that this helps, but we will not do it. But today, I'm giving you the green prescription to go start. Observe the colors, observe the textures, observe what's happening. Usually, you know, uh, especially when I'm at my workplace, I do not have access to the nature around me. And sometimes because I'm a therapist, I need to ground from one client to other. I need to shift. I need to change my hat. I need to de-roll, come back to myself, go back to the session. What I do is I carry something that uh, is nature focused, like I mentioned. So I usually have a small pebble with me that I got from a beach. So I carry that with me everywhere I go, wherever I am. I like to hold it in my hand, touch, smell. I obviously won't taste it, <laughs> but touch, smell, sense the temperature of it. And it really helps me ground when I hold it in between of my palms. So you can also do that. It could be a feather, it could be a small rock, a leaf, a pebble. If the difficulty is that you cannot probably engage in the nature all the time, get the nature with you. It's fine, have a small plant on your, 
office desk, if that's allowed in your workspace, really whatever is accessible to you and use those resources, carry it resources, carry it everywhere and every single day. And make sure that you have that gratitude with you and within you. Hmm. So how are we all doing? Are we all still here? And how do you guys want to let me know that you all are here right now? Okay, now you can send me the first letter of your surname on the chat box. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hmm. Actually, you know, it's so beautiful to see, Rishika, that um, usually when I do workshops or group therapy settings, I have the screens, you know, so it's not only a chat medium, um, I do have access to at least their voices. So it's so beautiful to see that so many of them are still here. I was a little concerned when I got to know that it's going to be a chat webinar format, but I am, I'm so glad that you guys are here. so happy. Thank you. Okay. It's really so, great you're giving such nice information. It's just so enlightening. I'm sure everyone is like very focused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's nice to know. All right. So um, let's move ahead. So these are the additional resources, like I said. Um, you don't really have to follow only the green prescription. Please do follow the green prescription though but uh, the other things that you can do that you will see a lot of mental health practitioners or social activists um, talking about is the 54321 technique which I'm pretty sure you've already seen on Instagram or Facebook it's going all over the internet and everyone is suddenly talking about it so it's about um, the five things that you can see four things that you can touch three things that you can hear two things that you can smell one thing that you can taste. We usually use this, uh, use this technique when we don't have a lot of time to um, come back to the here and now and we need it quick, we need it instant. That's when we use this technique with our clients. And the other technique is the box breathing that I usually use. And you probably might have seen the seen throughout the workshop. I use a lot of breathing in my work because it's, it's such an internal process and such an important process the reason I asked you to do inhaling from your nose and exhaling from your mouth is you will be able to sense that release when you're doing it. So, you know, when you inhale, you elevate your body and when you exhale, you release, release that shoulder, you know, give those massages, come back to the here and now. So when I need something instant, I usually use um, something that is nature focused, like I said, a pebble or a feather or uh, do the box breathing where you inhale, you hold and you exhale. But the, uh, the pace usually is four to six sep uh, seconds, depending on the breathing and lung capacity that you have. So it's a beautiful technique. Feel free to screenshot this slide if you would want to have, have like a takeaway or if you want to keep this with you, um, feel free to do that. Um, I hope I can go to the next slide. Can I? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to open this space for questions. Feel free to type it down in the chat box. And I believe someone, I think Anuja, if I'm not wrong, had a question, right? Where is it? Oh, Anuja, have you not typed your question down? Would you want to do it now? Or Rishika, if you have any questions that they have probably personally sent you, you can take them up as well. Well, I haven't received any questions yet. So okay. till we get in some questions, I would like to ask you a few things, of course. So Ashini, tell me, how did you realize that, you know, maybe you are out of sync and, you know, what was the need and what was the drive that took you to connect to nature to, you know, um, sort of like, you know, uh, like you said, um, you know, connect to the roots and understand the spatial awareness around you? Hmm. For me, it was COVID that really <laughs> helped me have that shift because I am a really 
like I need to be out. I cannot be in one space for longer than two, three hours because that's the nature of my work. I'm supposed to be in a space for more hours. So when it come, came to my personal life, I had to, I had to, had to go out and have that space and time for myself. But it was so not accessible. I couldn't do it during COVID. And that's when it really, really hit me. I felt all the stress, all the tension, all the anxiety. And then there were people who came and asked me, hey, you are a therapist? No. Why are you feeling stress and anxiety? <laughs> but I am a human. No. <laughs> what can I do? Whatever you are experiencing is also happening to me. It also happens to me. And I had to find another way. I had to find a way that was not really written in the books because I wasn't working anymore. That's when through holistic wellness and uh, I've done something called as Buddhist practices in therapy work. And that's how nature came to me. I didn't go to it. It came to me. And now it's, it's like a part of my DNA. If I'm not doing that, especially because majority of my work is work from home. So I am in the same room always. That's how I de-roll from my work. So that's how I understood that, you know, sometimes not all tools are accessible, whether it's based on expense or whether it's based on accessibility of that particular resource. So yeah, that's how it really started the process initiative. Wow, that's great. I think um, a lot of people did turn to you know, mental wellness and a lot of awareness, um, mm. you know, there was a lot of awareness regarding mental health, mental, you know, well-being during COVID. And um, in some ways, this is really nice because people actually understood a lot of, uh, you know, things about themselves, which they weren't aware of initially. And, you know, a lot of people chose different outlets like you. The first line that you opened your, you know, um, session with was, you know, some people write poetries and quotes where they use, uh, you know, elements of nature to beautifully yeah. describe how they're feeling. I think that was one of my ways to, you know, survive during COVID. I love uh, writing in general. So I used to write mm. a lot about, you know, rain, the droplets, how it feels when we hear it. So that, that was beautiful, how you connected the whole thing across. That was beautiful. Yeah, because see, not everyone would like to go walk their dog in a park, right? Every one of us are individually different. So you really need to figure out what you like to do. What is your body telling you to do? Yeah, I think we have a couple of questions in the chat box. How to overcome or handle anxiety or fear for something? Is there any way plan to action to this? Um, Rex, I would personally suggest that as this is a really personal question, it's important that you take it up in an in individual space than in a group space. But um, it's really important to see where is this coming from? Where is this anxiety or fear coming from? So if you're already engaging with a therapist, then it's important that you bring it up with them. And because it's a personal question, I don't think it's appropriate to, you know, talk about it in the group space because I would like to respect your privacy. Otherwise, you can also reach out to Onsurity if you're not having a counselor or a therapist with, that you're working with right now. And they will be able to, um, you know, help you reach out to me or anyone else. I hope that helps, Fritz. Um, okay, I would like just the answer if you can pass it on to her okay no i could see your question yes. shima how to control anger uh okay let's relate that to nature what in what form of nature do you really see anger rishika you can take it up to if if you would like to answer it i think when i look at um, anger, I personally see that in elements of um, fire, especially to me, represents anger. For some people, it could be calmness as well. But to me, that's how I see it. Now, how do I control fire? What is my need to control it? That is important. Are you seeing with parameters of safety? Or where is this anger coming from? Those, those, um, things are really important but I, I would really not say you have to control some kind of emotion I'm not a therapist who says that this emotion is wrong this emotion is right uh, I'm a therapist who accepts all emotions and all needs 
but it's important to see where is this coming from? Like I was telling, uh, telling about threats as well. How to overcome general diseases like BP, sugar, anger through holistic approaches. Chandrasekhar, um, holistic approaches are a great way to deal with um, our overall health. And when I say overall, I'm referring to both physical, mental, and also spiritual well-being. Um, and holistic approaches really focus on the root cause. They focus on what is the root cause. Um, and that's, that's really important. When you say how to control it really depends on the individual and their overall health because individualistically we are all different. We come from different cultures, we come from different backgrounds, different lifestyles, and all of that do play a role in our overall health. So I cannot give a generalized answer state, stating that do this and this will be done um, because blood pressure and something are not really one thing that are happening to you. They might be an underlying concern that really has to be addressed. Just close my eyes and take a deep breath to control my anger. Okay, okay. So usually when anger, um, a lot of, I have seen a lot of my clients doing this with respect to anger is, if the anger is towards a person or an incident or a situation, they like to write a letter based on that and tear it into pieces or crumble it or um, throw it in the dustbin or uh, put fire to it. Uh, please make sure you're safe if you're trying to do this. Uh, but these are the things that I have seen a lot of people do. And within my work, because of the background of expressive arts, I like to intervene a lot of arts, especially things like drama or play. They have a great um, scope of bringing the emotion out in its intensity. Instead of going out, is there any other way to reduce the stress immediately? See, again, you want instant. Okay. Um, so I assume, uh, Hema Prabha, you are referring to stress uh, that has that has been acute per se. I wouldn't do this to something that has been chronic, that has been there from a really long time. But if you really want something, um, I cannot really remove the stress from you. But what you can try to do is really to have a complete body scan. Like I said in the initially, how I let you scan your own leg, your foot, um, scan your entire body. And it's okay if you would want to um, gently touch your own body and see where you're feeling that stress where is that numbness where is that um uh, that feel of tingling sensation or heaviness because see usually all of the emotions it's not just your mind your entire body is experiencing with you so it's important to see where are you feeling it a lot of times people say that there is ache over here behind the neck the shoulders so really breathing in and release that drop your shoulders down and try things like that and navigate through to see what's helping you. Ashley, I have a fear for heights and each time when I try to get rid of it, I'm getting panic attack and my fear is increasing. The people around me keeping on saying, you have to overcome your fear. What is your take on this as a therapist? Hmm. See, uh, even as a therapist, I have my own uh, traumas, I have my own fears, I have my own panics. There's nothing wrong to have it. It is important as to see when are you ready to work through it. I will not say you have to overcome it. There's no you have to. Are you ready to work through it? And that's important. But with this, the sense that I am getting, Ashley, there is a lot of control that has been given to the external world. At least that's what I'm sensing when um with 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 the message that you put on the chat try to see if you are really ready to you know navigate your way through it and work through it i'm definitely i'm sure that it's not going to be a cake work uh, it may be a bumpy road but it is a road that can be taken if you have your therapist as a co-passenger or if you have nisha as a co-passenger with you Thank you. Thank you so much, Insurity. Okay. Actually, one of the other very beautiful ways to unwind and get that stress out is dancing. 
I'm not sure how many people dance. Guys, why don't you drop uh, uh, like a yes or a, some sign in the chat box to let me know how many of you dance. So uh, I feel like dancing is also another beautiful way of, you know, letting all of that stress out, like after the whole day, uh, when you see dancers, there are different forms of dances. And then there's this beautiful Indian form where you have each mudra, uh, you know, where you have the each uh, turns, e each words have so much in-depth meaning to it, uh, to, express, to express your emotion out, to, you know, just unwind and get rid of all the stress through each turn, through each twirl. So I think so that is also yeah. when we talk about dance, at least because I have a background, I'm a dancer myself for more than 15 years now. So I have been into this world of aesthetics, having that proper posture, your elbow up, your body elevated. And now when I'm working as a therapist and using espresso arts, dance woman therapy, it's not about the aesthetics. You don't have to be a dancer to dance. Like, you know, when you go to a club or something like that, you move. So that's why I started calling it movement or expression rather than consigning it and constraining it to dancing and mudra. It's okay. <laughs> so I, dance is a great, um, I will not say stress buster only, but it's a great way to de-roll, to love your body, to release, like um, Rishika said. And that is what I usually do in my work as well, you know. And it's that one great um form of art that has uh, the ability to connect your mind and your body and to ground you. So usually arts are a great way to if you want to ground and that's why you see a lot of people drawing nature or elements of nature when, when they are really in that state of mind. Oh, there's another question in the question in a box. Nivedita is asking how to deal with overthinking and anxiety about future. Now, Vedita, I would really suggest to be in the here and now with the nature. It's, it's going to be there. That's the only thing, especially in our generation right now, that is in the here and now. Rest everything, whether you see your career, your profession, or uh, even COVID, it's, it's only progressing. Nothing is here. We are either so, um, what do you say? overwhelmed about our past or overwhelmed about our future or what is here what is in the now is only the nature so I would really suggest you to spend some time with the nature however you want to you know you want to go down to the beach sit in front of the beach or sit in front of um, a laptop or something play a video of scenic views or beach um, this thing there's this video by Arnold where he talks about how he is 100 and plus years now. And the only suggestion he's giving to this generation is put your magic wands in his terminology, a phone away. Be with the nature, see the waves, see the sand, see the water, see them. These itself have scientific evidence which prove that you know, they can help you um, navigate your well-being through your life. Uh, Kamalyal, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Is asking how to become a successful person in this competitive world. I want to succeed. Is it really making me nervous? I'm not sure. Please tell me. Huh. Um, it really depends upon what you really define success as, what success is to you, really. Um, and if you want to succeed, how do you want to succeed? And then what do you want to succeed? Do you want to succeed as an individual? Do you want to succeed in your professional life, your spiritual uh, life or overall? It's important to look at that because even I'm not sure um, with your message, what exactly are you referring to? Professional life. Okay. Um, so I think, you know, when you come to professional life, there is a standardization and a logical way as to how you should go about it. Um, and I'm not the best person to answer that because I have not taken a, a, a route that has been told for me to take or asked for me to take. My way in my professional life has really flown, um, has been a flow just like the waves in the ocean. So I'm okay with that flow. Um, and for me, that is success because I had 
failed through it. So it's really important to look at it in more uh, depth, Daniel. Okay. So I am mindful of the time. We are a minute ahead already. So um, if there are any questions, can we take one last question and close, Rishika? Of course. Let's just oh. see for another minute for a last question. No questions about the webinar? Need to drop off. Okay. Okay, Minaki. Thank you, Minaki, for joining. Have a great day. Okay. So um, there are additional resources that are provided by uh, manoshala.com that you can refer to. You can take a screenshot of this slide if you would uh, want to have it with you after the webinar as well. Or you can directly go to the website and you can find it in the homepage and book a free consultation call. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you want to reach out to me or if you want to reach out to another counselor or a therapist, you can reach out to uh, Manushala or Onshurity and the contact details are there on this slide. Feel free to screenshot if you would want to. And you can reach out to them and the bridge will be formed from there. I hope you guys had something to take away from today's um, webinar. I really wanted to make sure that it was more interactive, more towards you, towards us, and to build that cohesiveness and uh, network with all of you. Before we close for today, I wanted to have, or, or to do a simple activity where we can de-roll from the listeners and participants hat to whatever we are going to progress next after the webinar. So I invite you to start from your hands and your legs and to really shake everything off, to inhale everything that you want to take from this session and to exhale everything that you don't want to take from this session and to really come back to the here and now. Slowly bring your attention to the screen, to the four sides of your laptop or your phone or any device that you're using. And finally to me, to my face. Uh, we'll be signing off now. Thank you so much for attending the space and start showing gratitude to your own bodies, your own minds for bringing you here to this space because it takes a lot to be in a space, especially to sit through for an hour and listen to me go on and on. So thank you so much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. And thank you, Anshority and Rishika for helping me navigate through the process. Thank you so much, Shini. It was really wonderful, really insightful. And I think I will for sure go back and spend some time in my balcony with my cats today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wish you do. <laughs> Shailish. Uh, yes, I am on LinkedIn, Shailish. Do. Awesome. Shall we close? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. Have a great day, y'all.